It was Super Saturday at the Ministry of Education, Grongland on Carfest Avenue, as St. George's pulled out a sudden death goal against South Ramville Secondary in the finals of the Milo Petra on the 20 football tournament. The two teams played scoreless at the end of regulation and two periods of extra time. The third place playoff saw Tuckville hammering Carmel 5 1, still smarting from their elimination in the semis via penalty kicks. Most valuable player of the tournament was Royston Dublin, who also copped the best goalie honours. Isan Griffith caught the action live and spoke with the ecstatic winners. Are we go for win or we lose? Or we come for win? Okay, let's hope we school. And I, and I feel lovely. This means a lot in terms of. of you know, upgrading in terms of seeing our school to do something rather than just, you know, anything bad, we could do something good. And this, 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 I feel real good, knowing that, you know, St. Jairus is finally on top for something good. Insert, South Ramfield left the ground disappointed, but with the knowledge that they put up a great fight against equally matched opponents. And with the end of one school tournament, another was launched on Saturday. The Scotiabank Pepsi Football Academy has now moved into its tournament phase. Scotiabank country manager Amanda St. Aubin said that Scotiabank is pleased to be giving more children the opportunity to realize their dream of playing football. She said the tournament is an important aspect of the bank's Bright Future program, which is the bank's corporate giving initiative to benefit children. The expansion of the academy in terms of number and location of schools is heartening for us as a sponsor as we are assured that we are giving more children the opportunity to realize their dream of playing football. To the parents who ensure that their children are part of this program, we recognize that it's not easy to pick your children up, drop them off, take them to extracurricular activities. And we'd like to say thank you for letting us share in your vision. And we hope that together we can work to see these kids become future Jaguars. 12 male and 8 female teams will be competing in the tournament, which also started on Saturday. And to end with athletics, the Amateur Athletics Association of Guyana held its award ceremony on Friday evening last. Several athletes were awarded for outstanding performances throughout 2012. They were addressed by Minister of Culture, Youth and Sport, Dr. Frank Anthony, and the President of the Federation, Andrew Hudson. And I'm sure that all of you receiving these awards tonight, you're getting them because you have performed uh, with excellence, and to the coaches, I think your services of providing excellent service to the young athletes would have been the hallmark while you're receiving these awards in the event. I must state clearly, this Council of 2013 going forward intends to build on the good things that happened in 2012 and the previous Council. We are fine athletes. We don't plan to cast them aside because they were from last year. We've got fine council members. We don't plan to cast them aside because of last year. What we plan to do is to make them better and they can run faster. The Guyana Olympic Association also took the opportunity to congratulate the association on a productive year and donated a substantial donation towards the teams traveling to represent Guyana at the character track and field championships slated for the Bahamas in the coming week. Reporting for Capital News, Royal Collins.